Hi, this is Shweta from ClearTax and today I will speak about deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability. The Indian accounting standards require a company to recognize deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability at the end of each accounting period. A deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability arises due to the timing differences between the book profits and the taxable profits of a company. The timing difference can be of two types, a temporary difference or a permanent difference. A temporary difference is a difference between the book profit and the taxable profit which is capable of reversing in the subsequent accounting periods. A permanent difference is a difference between the book profit and taxable profit which cannot be reversed in the subsequent accounting periods. In case your book profit is higher than your taxable profit, then you are paying less taxes at present and you may be liable to pay a higher tax in the future. These kind of differences will create a deferred tax liability. However, if your book profit is lower than your taxable profit, you are paying a higher rate of tax now and you may be liable for a lower rate of tax in the future. These kind of differences create a deferred tax asset. One must quantify these timing differences and accordingly recognize either a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability in an accounting period. Examples of timing differences which create a deferred tax asset are unobserved depreciation or carry forward of losses. However, a deferred tax asset is recognized only if the company is going to carry on business in the future and estimates a taxable income. The test of the going concern assumption must be done at the end of each accounting period as on the balance sheet date. The tests are based on future expansion plans, sales estimations, capital expenditure plans, etc. An example of timing differences which create a deferred tax liability is differences in the depreciation. There may be a depreciation which is higher under the income tax in the initial years in comparison to the Companies Act. The depreciation may be lower under the income tax law in the subsequent years while the depreciation under Companies Act remains the same. In such a situation, the company may pay higher tax in the future years due to a low tax depreciation in the future years. This creates a deferred tax liability for the company. The deferred tax asset or liability is based on the current rate of income tax. The amount of the temporary timing differences is multiplied with the current rate of income tax to arrive at either the deferred tax asset or the deferred tax liability. With respect to permanent timing differences, such as a disallowance for fines or penalties paid, the timing differences are not included for the purpose of calculation of a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability. In respect of entities which are under a tax holiday, such as an entity enjoying the tax holiday under Section 10 AA, there is no deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability recognized in respect of timing differences which originate and reverse during the tax holiday period. A deferred tax asset or a liability is recognized only in respect of timing differences which originate in the tax holiday period and reverse post the tax holiday period. With respect to MAT credit, in case of companies which pay tax under MAT under Section 115 JB of the Income Tax Act, in such cases, the MAT credit carried forward is not a deferred tax asset. Do like and share our video and do not forget to hit the bell icon for notifications. Thank you.